hey guys so let's talk about co2 dissociation curve in this video so basically this curve is nearly a straight line having no steep or flat portions as we have studied in the o2 hp dissociation curve this curve is comparatively having a straight line so in the o2 hp dissociation curve we have talked about the bohr's effect if you guys remember and here in the co2 dissociation curve we talk about the haldane effect so haldane effect says that again the curve might shift towards or either towards the right side or towards the left side but if the co2 dissociation curve has the shift uh, has to sh have to shift towards the right side then there should be the greater level of oxyhemoglobin right so what happens is we are having a two points over here like one blue line you can see that is the venous line with the venous point and one the red one with the arterial point right so as you can see that on the x uh, on the x axis we are having a partial pressure of carbon dioxide in the millimeter of mercury on the y axis we are talking about the co2 content ml in the ml per minute right so at the arterial point we are having a pco2 of around 40 millimeter of mercury and at the venous point we are having a partial pressure of carbon dioxide at around 46 millimeter of mercury right so what happens is if the curve has to shift toward the right side there has to be more level of oxyhemoglobin so if we are going towards the oxygen right if you are going towards the oxygen where the saturation levels are around 97 to 100 percent so if we are going towards the oxyhemoglobin right so with there what do you think the carbon dioxide uh, has to load or unload i mean the carbon dioxide delivery should happen or uh, more loading of the carbon dioxide should happen so obviously if the saturation levels are higher then the carbon dioxide levels will be given more in the lungs so saturation will be higher at the lungs level only so what happens is that towards the uh, when we move towards the oxygen levels more oxygen level or we can say the alveoli level we can say the alveoli level at that point of time we are releasing more carbon dioxide from the blood into the lungs right so i will tell you over here that for example this is the lungs right these are the lungs right and here there are the capillaries okay pulmonary capillaries let's say so pulmonary capillaries are carrying the co2 let's say this is the co2 it has to deliver to the oxygen this is a functional diagram only for the understanding purpose right so what is happening is that if this is the co2 right so if at the lungs level i'm talking about i'm talking about the lungs level or at the alveoli level right there are the alveoli inside isn't it so if this co2 level has to go uh, into the alveoli from the pulmonary capillaries right i'm at the alveoli level here the saturation level which i'm expecting is the highest that is around 98 percent or 100 percent like that right so more co2 loading will be happening and uh, more oxygen will be coming into the blood capillaries so co2 loading will be i mean co2 unloading sorry co2 unloading will be happening co2 unloading from the capillaries right so more co2 can be given to the alveoli over here because saturation levels are higher whereas if you talk about the tissue level for example let's say these are the tissues present over here these are the tissues which are present over here so what can happen is that the saturation levels are not good over here saturation levels are around 75 percent which we have talked about earlier also in the o2hp dissociation curve saturation level is dropping but not dropping at that level that it might drop to uh, uh, some drastic value but even if the desaturation is happening it is generally in the physiological limit it is happening to 75 percent so that is the uh, that is that is the, about the saturation levels so if the desaturation obviously this is the desaturation if the desaturation is happening right at that point of time right the loading of uh, carbon dioxide is happening in the tissues it means that the uh, carbon dioxide right will be actually taken up from there at the tissue level so loading of co2 will be happening at the tissue level if the if the desaturation is happening you can see if the saturation levels are less right so if the saturation levels are less the loading of more carbon dioxide at the tissues are happening right because saturation levels are less over here so loading of the co2 will be happening at the tissues level and if the saturation levels are higher 
the unloading of the carbon dioxide in the lungs. So Haldane effect says, if you talk about the Haldane effect, Haldane effect says that the CO2 dissociation curve will be shift toward the right side at the greater level of oxyhemoglobin. So in a nut cell, if the saturation levels will be higher, then your CO2 dissociation curve will go towards the right side. And if the saturation levels will be dropping, desaturation will be happening. So your curve will shift towards the left side. If the curve will shift towards the right side, then at that point of time, you will be unloading more carbon dioxide in the lungs. And if the saturation levels are on the lower side, then you are going towards the left side of the curve. It means more amount of carbon dioxide you will be uh, loading at the tissue level, right? So at the tissue level, right? So that is about the CO2, CO2 dissociation curve, right? Thank you.